And we're back. We're going to look at some spotlight games right now. But before we do, Ryan Dole, as he mentioned, coming off an impressive four and one week in week three. He already gave you his picks before. I think something else you need to look at when we talk about when we talk about spreads. Florida minus seven at Tennessee. You look at that UCLA BYU game. UCLA beat Tennessee and then gets thrashed by BYU. What does that say about Tennessee's team? If I'm looking at those spreads, I think I'm going to go with Florida minus Florida minus seven. What is wrong with you? Can, can we get the lights cut down, please? Ladies and gentlemen, we here at College Game Week would like to take a moment to reflect on the life and career of Oregon quarterback Justin Roper, who apparently is no longer with us. This is just a sad loss for everybody, especially for that Oregon program. Turn lights back on. Justin Roper is not dead. Contrary to what Ryan Dole just said, he's out for this week. He is not dead, though. So rest easy, Ducks fans, and more importantly, Mr. and Mrs. Roper. Your son is fine. Thanks a lot, Cole. Let's move on and look at some spotlight games. That is embarrassing. Number three, Georgia, travels west of the Mississippi for the first time since I can remember to take on Arizona State. This is a primetime Saturday night game on ABC. Neither team particularly impressive in week three. In fact, Arizona State lost to UNLV, as we already mentioned. Georgia, meanwhile, gets past South Carolina. A fumble on the goal line for South Carolina secures a 14-7 Bulldogs win. Bottom line, how does that loss for Arizona State affect this game? Well, I think it affects it big time. You look at UNLV. UNLV have lost 21 of their last 22 games on the road before this. They go in and knock off Arizona State. You say what you want to about looking ahead. Arizona State had their eye on the Bulldogs there. I think Arizona State, all, all, people have been talking since this game was put on the schedule about the ineptitude on their offensive line. And you see some speed in the Pac-10, namely against USC. They're about to see some SEC speed against the Georgia Bulldogs. And I really think that's going to be too much for them in this game. The only chance they have is if that offensive line really pulls together because they throw the ball around a little bit. You're going to see a different style of offense in this game than you're normal, than you're accustomed to if you're Georgia. But they're going to see some speed defensively in this game they're not used to. Yeah, when you talk about throwing the ball around, how about Rudy Carpenter? 975 passing yards so far this year. Six times he's hooked up with a receiver to get to the end zone so far this year. So that's definitely big for Arizona State. They're going to have a little offensive firepower. And listen to this, Josh. We never want to talk about travel being an issue for a team. Why don't you ask the University of California what travel can do to you? They go into Maryland last week. Maryland loses the week before to Middle Tennessee State. Maryland knocks off Cal. That game is 9 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. You think travel's not an issue? Why don't you go ask them about it? Well, listen, when you're sipping coffee instead of Gatorade and you're eating Danishes instead of energy bars over there, that's tough for Cal. I mean, they're, they're playing before the sun comes up in Cal. Nonetheless, Georgia, as you mentioned, has been unwilling to travel. Now, that's, a, that's, that's something that's changing for the Bulldogs when it comes to their schedule in years to come. They have some series against Colorado and Oregon coming up. So hats off the Bulldogs for finally venturing out of the SEC. We shift our attention to Wake Forest at Florida State. This is a Saturday night game on ESPN2, 7 o'clock kickoff in Tallahassee. And both of these teams, believe it or not, are ranked. Wake Forest sitting at number 18, while Florida State enters the AP poll this week for the first time this season at number 24. And I mentioned before, FSU with a weak schedule. They get Clemson, Wake Forest, and Virginia Tech all at home. And this is the first of three big-time conference games that they need in order to surprise some people and maybe make a run in an ACC title this year. What do we see in this game? Well, I think that one thing you have to look at with Florida State, Drew Weatherford, I think he's been there for about 10 years now, but no longer the starting quarterback. Christian Plummer, starting quarterback for the Seminoles, six touchdowns so far, zero interception. That's an efficient quarterback play. That's, that's the thing that will help you in a big game. So you look at the ACC as a conference, and it's down right now. But Wake Forest has not has not fit the trend of the ACC. They beat Ole Miss at home. That's an SEC team at home, and a pretty good one, a little underrated SEC team. You know, Wake Forest only plays two ranked teams this whole season, this being the first. And then Clemson ranked 23rd in the nation right now. They get them at home. So if they can win this game, they have a chance to set things up for a potential run at maybe a 10 or 11 win season and an ACC title because as far as I'm concerned, they're the favorites in the ACC right now until proven up. Well, and I think when you look at Wake Forest, you look at veteran leadership. You've got Riley Skinner there, five touchdowns, zero interceptions so far. And Sam Swank, we have yet to mention the kicker on the college game so far, but I'm going to do it. 
the active leader in career field goals. So far, five of five on field goals, hit three from the young 45 point attempts. It comes down to a field goal. I want Sam Swank on my team. So look out for Wake Forest and a little veteran leadership right there with the David Beacons. Very interesting game and something you're not going to be here talking about a lot this week. I really, I really, I really think this game goes a long way, along with Virginia Tech and North Carolina, in defining the picture as it relates to the ACC title game. We shift our attention to Knoxville, Tennessee. The beleaguered volunteers welcome in number four ranked Florida. And Jeremy, as bad as Tennessee's look, Florida has looked outstanding. What do we see in this game? I think that you have to look at, most importantly, this is a rivalry game. So let's not take any spotlight off of it just because Tennessee has looked pitiful. Yeah, say, go ahead and say, no, let's say it. Jonathan Crompton and Arian Foster, the two players we know the most about from Tennessee, Jonathan Crompton, two touchdowns to go along with three interceptions. Not a very good ratio. Arian Foster, zero trips into the end zone so far. Um, just not looking great for the ball's leadership. Florida has looked great. Tim Tebow, probably the most well-known college football player in the nation right now. If you go and ask people outside of the sports world to name a college football player, they're going to name Tim Tebow most of the time. So um, when you look at that, not looking really great for Tennessee right now. Tebow indeed transcends college football to a certain degree. You look at Tennessee's schedule, four out of their next six opponents are ranked in the top ten right now. And that's just life in the Southeastern Conference. And it starts this week. You mentioned big robbery game. There is a lot of unrest in Knoxville right now. Something very uncharacteristic. If you watch that UAB game, which all the 13 people did last week, there were a lot of visible empty seats in Neyland Stadium. And that's a passionate, diehard fan base in Tennessee. So for there to be a lot of visible empty seats there, tells you that something is not right with that program. But Bill Fulmer, we saw that program kind of get off the tracks last year. And they ended up in Atlanta playing for a conference title. So Bill Fulmer can get this train back on the tracks, but it's going to be tough to do with that schedule I mentioned. It starts this week in Florida. It, it's not easy, but this early in the season, can we call this a must-win game? I think when you talk about must-win games, this is definitely it. You talk about that upcoming schedule. Right now, I think if you look at this game, Tennessee lost the last three years to Florida. If they lose again, you've got just, just a really unhappy fan base. You're looking at a one and two Tennessee team there. However, if they're able to knock off Florida, let, let's make it clear, there will not be empty seats in the city. Right. There will not. Uh, Florida knocks, I mean, Tennessee knocks off Florida right now. You're looking at a very excited fan base. You're looking at a coach who's celebrating for Olympic wins. So this could be a big momentum swing for the University of Tennessee. The Gators have only gotten better since last year. And last year, they hung over half a hundred on Tennessee. So we'll see how things shake out this week. That is a 3.30 kickoff on CBS. It is now our favorite time of the week, ours, and I'm sure yours as well, a segment which is caught on with America. Friend of the week, Ryan Doyle is about to break down week three in a way that only he can. Let's sit at the door right now. Hey there, friends. It's time for the Friends of the Week again this week. This week, we got Michigan State's Javon Ringer, 43 carries for 282 yards, two touchdowns. BYU's quarterback had Max, Max Hall, 200, 271 yards, 27 to 35, seven touchdowns. I have never heard of that. And then Missouri's Chase Daniel, he threw for another half a mile this week, uh, 23 or 28, 405 yards, four touchdowns. QB rating of 251, friend. That's crazy. But then we got timeout time, friend. And I got three coaches that just need to get it together. Jimmy Trestle, Rick Neuheisel, and Tommy Tuberville. That is just an embarrassing week for those three coaches. I mean, get it together, guys. Back to you guys.